Right, got the tent pitched. Um, found a relatively sort of sheltered campsite. Um, handy to that spot I mentioned in my, one of my earlier vids where I wanted to get a shot to replicate one I took 20 years ago. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, tomorrow morning will be cloud free for a nice sunrise to uh, capture that. So yeah, had a wander around looking at various things this afternoon and um, ended up coming back here and putting the tent up. Uh, the Pandanis, which I shot first thing this morning, they're just a short way up the hill, five minutes. So they'll be handy to get to from here in the morning as well. Uh, but also sunset. Uh, once the sun sinks behind this hill, those uh, peaks behind us, Mount Weld and uh, Sierra Jane, normally uh, with the right light can certainly glow and look pretty stunning. So here's hoping for that. What I'll do now is uh, give a little bit of a descriptor on my um, other tent. You can never have too many tents. Right, this one's a uh, Norwegian one even though it's made in China, like everything in the world today. Um, Norwegian designed, it's called a Hellsport. Not Hellboy, Hellsport. Um, uh, it's, it's a good tent. Uh, it doesn't breathe too well, so you end up with condensation on winter trips or when it's really cold. The tends to drip on your face. So it's because the fly comes right down to the ground. But it is four season. As you can see, I've got it staked out. I've had it in catabatic winds up on the uh, other side of this range and um, spent a whole 10 hours sitting up in the tent, holding on for dear life. If I'd let go or tried to have some food, um, the gusts of wind were just unbelievable. So much so that the tent pole actually got bent. It did not break, it bent. Now, I've never had a tent do that before, so it's a testament to the uh, the uh, the poles for a start. Um, yeah, so it's quite roomy. It's got a good vestibule. You can't really cook. You can cook in it, but you've got to have the door open a bit. But yeah. Plenty of room for all the gear. Yeah, the trusty X-Ped down mat. Get a blissful night's sleep, although you don't really need a down mat when you're sleeping on this stuff called pineapple grass. It's quite spongy and uh, very soft and contours to your body, so you can actually get away without a therma rest. So yeah. So yeah, that's the tent. Yeah. It's uh, lovely and light too, which is good. The older you get, the more you worry about the weight on your back, I can tell you. So yeah, don't like green tents. They blend them in with the uh, surroundings and uh, especially if you're looking for your tent at the end of the day and it's misty or rainy and yeah, they tend to blend in. As I prefer a tent that stands out in colour, especially in situations like that when the mist comes down. So yeah, that's my little blurb about the tent. And we'll just wait now for some nice light and take some photos either before or after tea, haven't decided yet. Yeah, right, I've just had a uh, very enjoyable shoot uh, looking over Lake Judd towards Federation Peak, precipitous buff, bluff. Yeah, it's real golden hour now. Just pan around so everyone. Have a look. Quite stunning. Just the last rays touching that uh, spot up there where I normally camp. I may head up there for tomorrow night, I think. At least you can get um, pictures of uh, Mount Anne up there. But no, a fantastic day. Caught to eight, back to the tent and some dinner.
Uh, good morning. Uh, I've just been photographing sunrise. Uh, beautiful morning, bloody cold, bit of a chill wind. Um, yeah, reasonably happy with the pics. I'll just show you some of the uh, scenery as it is now. The golden hour is really gone, but lovely cloud in the valleys. Quite a scene, isn't it? Very nice. Right, uh, this is a uh, spot probably 25 years ago. I took a photo here. I was trying out some film called Egg for 50. Um, it was just a print film. And yeah, it was quite impressed with the colours, so had it enlarged and it. Uh, framed and sat on my mum's lounge room wall in pride of place. Uh, so often remember this vista uh, from when I'd go over to her place for tea or visit her. So yeah, a bit of nostalgia for me seeing she's recently passed on. But uh, yeah, in almost a uh, similar weather conditions with the clouds laying in the valleys. Just been scouting out locations for sunset photos, having a good wander around. Yeah, this Mount Anne. Very precipitous drop off the edge here, or what's going right there. Uh, Lake Timp down in there, and the northeast of Mount Anne over there, which is a very specky little spot, very delicate, fragile area. And over there is Anacananda, it's Australia's deepest cave. You can walk down into the mouth of it, it's a big cavernous chamber. to the west, a Frenchman's cap over there, and of course Lake Pedder. And this um, monolith here is a can that someone's built to disguise a hydro surveying pipe. A great big concrete thing when they probably put here when they were surveying uh, Lake Pedder, building the dams, etc. So yeah, and looking over to the Western Arthurs, where I'll be in three weeks. Wee-ha, can't wait for that. Lake Judd below. So yeah, I'll come up here probably for um, sunset or sunrise, probably sunset, I think. So um, yeah, great spot, great day. A little bit cool though, with the wind. Mount Field over there. So, talk about a grandstand uh, view that you get up here. Nothing to be sneezed at. 
Right. I thought I'd take this opportunity to elaborate on my story about the night spent in that tent in the storm up here. Um, I came up here, it would have been winter time, 2016, June, July, something like that. But anyway, I came up here to this area. Uh, there was a fair bit of snow around. Blue sky daylight today. Um, I came up for two nights and the first night I spent back here, a short way away. And it, it was fine, there was no wind, no, everything was fine. But something was at the back of my mind told me to move the campsite. So I did and I moved I don't know, about a kilometre back that way um, and found this, what I thought was a sheltered bowl area that was reasonably sheltered from all sides. And anyway, uh, put the tent up there and nothing was untoward until about eight o'clock at night after I'd had tea. And suddenly this wind just started to blow and I've never been in a tent, or in fact, I've never been anywhere like it. It was coming from all directions and you could hear it roaring. And then it had sort of come down this bowl, hang a right hand and just slam into the side of the tent. So I thought, my God, what, what's happening here? So I sat up in the tent and was holding the base of the tent pole. I was like that for the next 10 hours. It just blew incessantly. At one or two in the morning, I was literally falling asleep, sitting up in my tent, in my sleeping bag. Didn't dare go to the toilet, didn't dare take my hand off the tent pole to get some food or a drink of water. And I basically sat like that until six the next morning. And it was horrendous. And then it started to calm down, enough for me to pack the tent up. It was still blowing. And as I descended towards the, uh, the hut over the very steep rocky section, got blown off my feet innumerable times. It was quite dangerous. So in fact, I just sat behind a rock for half an hour until it stopped. Um, and the funny thing was, about a week later, Sandra and I went to the Ryer Island the ferry over, camped there and did a couple of little day walks and we did the walk up to Mount Moriah and I don't know about halfway up if that on this four wheel drive track you reach this saddle where the four wheel drive track continues to the bottom of the island and the track leaves off and goes to the summit and a few metres in we came across all these trees, you know, massive great eucalypt trees that looked like someone had just gone snap like a matchstick. There was nothing, all the leaves were still on, the branches on the ground, but the trees, the crowns had just literally been snapped. And it was very fresh, so I, I concluded that the wind I got here was the same that they had there. But yeah, very frightening experience in the tent. Because I knew if I, if I let my hand go of the tent pole, embracing the tent inside, uh, the tent would have collapsed and I would have had buckleys of trying to attach a, a pole sleeve to do a tent pole repair. The tent would have just, I would have been stuck inside it trying to unzip it to get out of it and doing all of that sort of thing in the middle of the bloody night with a head torch on and a howling wind was just, no, <laughs> wasn't an option. So yeah, my little Sixth Sense told me not to stay up here and to move somewhere else because if I'd stayed up here, this is just very exposed. There's, there's no way I'd, I'd be making a YouTube video now. I think myself and my tent will be, would have been um, blowing down there somewhere. So yeah, it's not often you get really bad wind like that in Tasmania, but when you do, oh gee. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd recount that. Um, the tent pole, when, I, when the tent was new, was bought, uh, the pole was dead straight. Now it's got a curve in it from where the uh, where Reed was holding on for dear life. All part of bushwalking slash tramping for the New Zealanders. Um, yeah, you still wouldn't miss being out here for kids. I've got this whole place to myself today. Some people below me I saw, the five tents on shelf camp, which is where you camp when you're doing the uh, PN circuit 
over Mount Lot, around over Sarah Jane and back out. Um, so I don't know what they were doing. I did see some parties on the top of Mount Airy, so a perfect day for that too. So anyway, enough from me. I think we'll um, get squared away and uh, go off and scout more locations for a, a sunset shoot. It might be all right. There's a little bit of cloud tonight, so hoping for a bit of colour. Uh, good morning. Been up for a, for an hour and a half, taking some photos of the uh, sunrise. I'm literally above uh, a sea of cloud in all the valleys with just the peaks poking up. Surreal. Yeah, managed to get a couple of good shots I'm quite happy with. So yeah, it was worth getting up for. And didn't have to walk far from the tent either. <laughs> So um, I'll just pan it round. Sorry for the sun and the lens. That'll give you an idea of what I've been looking at. Yes. Quite spectacular. And uh, the mist from Lake Pedder. Well, there's some mist rising on, just coming up over top of Mount Eliza there, scudding across. But yeah, Petter's all beneath the cloud. Lake Judd's visible, of course, but um, yeah, quite magical. A uh, wind-free night. So at the tent just up there, sheltered behind those rocks, very sheltered spy. Sot, spot. So yeah, home today. Had a perfect day. A um, pretty good trip all round. Right, on our way out, uh, that's looking back to Mount Anne. Very small on the uh, the GoPro and the little. Knoll up there, to the right of it, uh, I was was where I was camped uh, last night. Uh, coming round, looking towards the Thumbs, Wilds Crag, Bonds Crag, Clear Hill. Uh, what have we got round here? Frenchman in the distance, very pale and faded, uh, Mount Wedge. Prince of Wales directly behind, the Sentinels in the foreground there. Uh, Mount Sprint, all the way around to the Franklins. Mount Eliza, this peak in front of us here, which I forgot yesterday, and round to the Western Arthurs. And a sea of cloud covering everything below. Magnificent. Warmest day so far. Actually sweating. Barely a breath of wind. Absolutely blissful. This whole area in uh, winter really holds the snow up here. Um, yes, some trips I've uh, come up and just made it to Mount Eliza without skis or snowshoes. You can't go much further when the snow's really deep. But yeah, there's some good uh, bum sliding or sledge rides down into some... Uh, little valleys on that side. Yeah, all in all, a good trip, mission accomplished. Well, we're not home yet. <laughs> yeah. A top day in a top part of Tassie.